United Launch Alliance is targeting the launch of the penultimate Delta IV Heavy with the secretive NRLO-68 mission at 3.29 a.m. ET, 7.29 UTC. The launch will take place from Space Launch Complex 37, located at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The Delta IV Heavy was first stacked at Space Launch Complex 37 back in early 2023 and originally targeted to launch mid-April 2023. However, an undisclosed issue came up during pre-launch checkouts, forcing a delay to now. The 33-story mobile service tower that provides access and is currently shielding the rocket from Florida's weather is due to be rolled back this evening ahead of launch. The tower is raised just a few inches by 40 hydraulic cylinders and rolls back at 0.25 miles per hour to a safe point tilled 100 yards away. This could be delayed though by afternoon thunderstorms, but the launch window extends until 7.45 a.m. ET, 11.45 UTC. The Delta IV Heavy consists of three core boosters, each with an RS-68 engine. The hydrogen-fueled rocket produces 2.1 million ulbs of thrust at liftoff, which can launch up to 62,540 ulbs, 28,370 kilograms, to low Earth orbit. Following liftoff, the booster will head on an easterly trajectory over the Atlantic Ocean. About two and a half minutes into the flight, the two side boosters are expected to separate two and a half minutes into flight, according to ULA's visibility map. However, during past NRO launches, this has been just a vague placement due to the secrecy of the payload. Payload fairing separation will occur approximately seven minutes into the flight and will also signal the end of ULA's launch live stream at the request of the National Reconnaissance Office. Launch weather at liftoff is predicted to be 75% favorable, but ULA will be monitoring lingering thunderstorms and high ground winds. If weather or technical issues do not allow for launch, there are two opportunities for 24 and 48 hours later. SpaceX's Falcon 9 carrying the PSN Satria satellite successfully launched and deployed at 6.21 p.m. ET, 22.21 UTC. The launch had a 178-minute window and upper-level winds delayed the first launch attempt at the opening of the window, but SpaceX had plenty of time to work with and launched just a bit later into the launch window. The PSN Satria Indonesian Telecommunications was first contracted to be built in 2020 by Thales Alenia Space B, the Indonesian government, and delivered to the launch site in Cape Canaveral, Florida, in May 2023. The satellite was launched to a geostationary transfer orbit and then, after separating from the second stage of the Falcon 9, will use its own thrusters to raise itself to geostationary orbit and be positioned at 146 DG. The full cub band will cover the entire Indonesian territory and provide over 150 gigabytes per second. The Falcon 9 launching this mission was B-1067, which launched for the twelfth time. This booster has safely launched eight humans, two space station resupply missions, three communication satellites, and four Starlink batches, most recently launching May 14, 2023, a 36-day turnaround. Once the Falcon 9 launched from Space Launch Complex 40 on Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, the rocket steered itself on an eastward trajectory over the Atlantic Ocean. Just over two and a half minutes after launch, B-1067 separated from the second stage and oriented itself for re-entry into the atmosphere and after performing its entry burn. The first stage then reignited its engine for the landing burn and eventual touchdown on the drawn ship a shortfall of gravitas about eight and a half minutes after launch. The second stage performed a 56-second burn 27 minutes into the mission to set up payload separation just under 37 minutes after launch. This was the 39th Falcon 9 launch of the year and the 5th of the month. Elon Musk called for a pause in the development of artificial intelligence once again on Friday when speaking at the Vivitech conference in Paris, warning people of the dangers of AI if it is not regulated. Musk has been a proponent of more refined regulation in terms of AI development for several years. Dating back to 2017, he has pushed for there to be guidelines for it moving forward as the overdevelopment before regulations are set could be detrimental to the human race. I have exposure to the most cutting-edge AI, and I think people should be really concerned about it," Musk said at the National Governors Association meeting in 2017. I keep sounding the alarm bell, but until people see robots going down the street killing people, they don't know how to react because it seems so ethereal. Tesla has gone on to start developing its own bot, which Musk unveiled last year, claiming it will be able to simplify human life by taking care of monotonous and boring tasks. However, he is still quite convinced that the development of AI should begin slowing down well before an adequate regulatory process is established. The White House came out with its own blueprint for an AI Bill of Rights, a vision for protecting our civil rights in the algorithmic age in late 2022, 
which described five key principles for keeping humans safe during AI development. Musk continued this narrative last week during his speech, stating there are potential dangers for humans if AI development moves forward without regulations. There's a real danger for digital superintelligence having negative consequences, Musk said via Reuters. And so if we are not careful with creating artificial general intelligence, we could have potentially a catastrophic outcome. I am in favor of AI regulation because I think it is a risk to the public. And anything that's a risk to the public, there needs to be some kind of referee. That referee is the regulator. Musk's first appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast several years ago yielded a similar conversation, where he discussed his fear of AI overdevelopment. Friday, he said he believes there should be a hiatus in AI development until there is regulation. I just want to say, I think we should pause. During Elon Musk's visit to France, the billionaire estimated that Neuralink would start its first human trial before the end of this year. It's looking like the first case will be later this year, said Elon Musk during an interview at the Vivitech event in Paris. Neuralink posted its patient registry on its official website. Neuralink's patient registry asks willing participants about their conditions, including if they are quadriplegic, paraplegic, visually impaired, or have aphasia or hearing impairments. The registry application includes the consent form and provides Neuralink authorization to use and disclose the patient's medical records and questionnaires. Neuralink received the U.S. Federal Drug Administration's approval to launch its first human clinical study in May 2023. Thus far, based on Neuralink's animal trials, Elon Musk is confident the company's brain implant can restore full-body functionality and restore vision. For its first human trials, Neuralink may not immediately try to restore any body functions. The company might focus more on creating a link between humans and technology similar to Neuralink's implant in Pager, the nine-year-old macaque. In 2021, Neuralink released a video of Pager playing the game Pong with his mind. The company implanted its device into Pager's brain, allowing the Mac Act to control the game without a joystick. So, what are your thoughts about AI Future? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.